Hey, yeah, man, what's up? We back with another one. Um, in case y'all be wondering why I'll be watching the Houston news and I ain't no one there from it, it's because I be trying to keep up on the updates and I don't want to watch other bloggers or YouTubers until I do my video because you know I don't want to be copying and shit and get ideas from other people. But, um, the beginning of this newscast is about how they're about to have another hurricane or tornado or, um, a water disaster or whatever and a lot of flooding. And it seems like flooding has been an epidemic. It's going to trend. It's going to keep going. And I thought that God wouldn't destroy the earth by water anymore. That was the, um, point of the sign of the rainbow that it wouldn't happen again. But I think it is. And here's a little evidence. What do you think about that? And then it's going to go right into the Malia Davis story update. Um, cause now they're trying to say this nigga retarded. And I told you that was a forced confession. That's why they won't. Yeah. Just listen up, y'all. tend to block some of these roads that pool uh, water all day. Also, we watch strong rain bands move in. City officials were expecting between two to four inches of rain. That street flooding could have become a big headache for business and homeowners. The main problem is wakes. So folks come into town and they're visiting and they don't realize that if they drive through the water, it's going to push the water into the buildings. Beach Patrol officials say that the tide came in a foot did this nigga say his wakes? Look, you, you, he didn't say, oh, tourism weekend vacation. This nigga said death. So the biggest concern is when deaths happen and people come to mourn from other cities, my nigga. Really, homie? Uh, More than predicted, which helped spare some of these low spots from street flooding. Lifeguards say that they will be flying those red flags because the water is still pretty rough and there are some strong rip currents out there so they want to warn people that even though the rain has stopped make sure that you do not go into the water back to you guys all right thank you david and throughout the day our meteorologists david and erica yeah. have been giving you yeah. the latest weather it's information possible. with I'm live reports happy. on our KHOU so facebook page so be sure to keep following us on social media i mean it's funny how now that um the newscast and the anchorman and all that's on um, YouTube. That they just be talking over what they basically like and subscribe, like the YouTubers and shit. Because you see them talking while she's in the background. Like, that's kind of weird now, isn't it, yo? And once you've done that, be sure you've downloaded the KHU 11 mobile app. If you enable push notifications, you'll get alerts sent straight to your phone anytime we are tracking severe weather. Now for a look at more of the day's top stories. First, the ongoing quest for justice for little Malia Davis. Marcelina Benito reports on why an attorney for Malia's stepfather wants phone records from community activist Quanell X. Darion Vence has yet to face upgraded murder charges, but his defense attorney has been very busy these last few days. Dorian Kotler has filed a subpoena for Quanell X's phone records. It's an attempt to prove Quanell was sent to get a confession from Vence by police. And today, an order was filed to have Vence undergo a mental health and intellectual disability evaluation. Our legal expert, Gerald Tree, says that does not mean an insanity defense might be in the works. They just want to assess and make sure he's competent to stand trial. Tree says it's also... Bullshit. They know what they're going to try to go for the insanity plea or the fact that this nigga done got the police in there. He'll snitch. You know what I'm saying? Bean pie, my sucker. Plea defense will file a motion down the road to have Vince's trial moved out of Harris County. We'll have more on that coming up at 6. For now, we're reporting from downtown. I'm Marshall Benito, KHOU 11 News. Mayor Sylvester Turner has talked about this case often, calling Malia everyone's child. Today, he said everything is being done to bring Malia's killer to justice. On Sunday night, City Hall will be lit up in pink. That was Malia's favorite color. And there will be a march from City Hall to honor the four-year-old. In memory of Malia Davis, and also... Um as a statement that we all just need to embrace all of our kids. And I'm not just talking about our biological kids, but all of our kids as we move forward. If you know something about this case, please call Crime Stoppers. Vice President Mike Pence meeting with Mexican officials at the White House about the tariffs President Trump wants to put on Mexican products. The president plans to put a 5% tax on all goods starting Monday. Unless, he says, Mexico stops the flow of migrants coming to our border. 
The tariffs could cost Americans billions of dollars. Everything must go. La Toretta is cashing in on what's left before Margarita Mill takes over at Lake Conroe. The liquidation is open to the public and will include everything from drapes to TVs and even furniture. It's a tag sale on location, which means it's first come, first serve, and will continue until all items are sold. The hours, 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. through Saturday and 12 to 5 on Sunday. 5G. You know it's supposed to be like lightning at our face. Now let's go with the latest newscast. We love it news at six starts now. We are finally getting a break from the rain, except for some scattered showers on the east side of town. But we're not out of the clear just yet. The rain left a flood of problems across town. High water seeped into some homes and stranded cars from Warren to Kendleton in Fort Bend. And the water on the West Park Tollway forced drivers to turn around and go the wrong way on the highway just so they could get to work this morning. Be careful out there. Some roads still wet in Galveston. The storm pushed in high tides as they shut down the Lynchburg Ferry, and there is a red flag warning for the beaches. And Dave, even more rain is on the way, even though we have a lull right now. And this is all from a piddly little tropical yeah, system. Yeah, I know. I mean, scary, it, isn't it? just reminds you how even the small ones can be big flooding uh, concerns. You see the rain now exiting, although it's still raining Baltimore Peninsula, High Island. Uh, I see you guys, Anahuac, Mount Bellevue, Chambers County getting wet right now, but the heaviest stuff is pushing east. We're drying out to the west. Things are in the process of settling down, but it's not quite done with you, Anahuac, and Crystal Beach still seeing some uh, high water on some of the roads there on Highway 87. From the satellite perspective, enhanced, you see the cloud tops actually beginning to show less red as it begins to settle down right now. The rest of the tropics are quiet. I don't see anything else brewing out here. But what is brewing? Tomorrow evening's chance for thunderstorms. It's right here over Albuquerque, New Mexico. See the spin? That upper level storm system is going to race toward Houston. It hits here around this time tomorrow. I'll show you what to expect coming up here in a couple of minutes. Yeah, that's not what they want to hear in the southwest. A waterlogged Wharton recovering from the rain. If your property was flooded, code enforcement wants to hear from you. So call the number right there on the bottom of your screen to get an inspector to come look at the damage. Melissa Correa on the ground with more. Yeah, this neighborhood off of FM 1301 is still underwater. And this time around, it's the east side of Wharton that really took a hit. With folks like Ray Begata stalling out before the sun came up. And you know what? I thought about it. I'm going to call it and not go because I saw too much water. I'll make it it's just go down. I checked our roads. Yeah, but it was dark. As his brand new car broke down blocks from his destination, barricades kept the rest of Wharton at bay. The county closed all of its offices today, and businesses like the Mariachi Bar cleaned up in the dark. A fallen line knocked out power this morning. All I heard was like, and while the power was being restored, 15 year old Caleb Moreno spent the day biking past debris. I feel bad for those people that are flooded. Mm -hmm. It's like Hurricane uh, Harvey's sister came to destroy us here today. The city's sewage system was maxed out for most of the day, but Wharton City Hall confirms that all services are back up and running tonight. Right, Mel, we'll take it from here. And not too far from where Mel was in Kendleton, they were hit with more than half a foot of rain. Homeowners in the Fort Bend County town spent the day cleaning up and calling insurance companies. Some say it was worse than what they dealt with during Harvey. Remember, you can track this next round of rain with the KHU 11 app and be sure to turn on the notifications so we can send you weather and news alerts. We've got new developments tonight in the search for justice for little Malia Davis. The attorney for suspect Darion Vince has filed a subpoena for Quanell X's cell phone records. You might recall last week, Quanell said Vince told him in a jailhouse confession that Malia's body was dumped in Arkansas. Vince is. Yeah, 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 buddy, buddy, buddy. Another big story. We are continuing to follow the latest sex scandal in the Catholic. Yeah, this one the next video. Sorry. Spoiler alert. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to... We, we already lost one baby. Well, by the mothers. Now we got another set. This is Courtney Bell, Buckingham Killer. And she's a meth smoker. And yeah, it is a sickness, but bitch, don't kill your children. 
It don't make no god dang damn sense. We over here with this. Emergency. I just woke up. My dog woke me up on the couch. Um, I have a two year old and I have a two week old. And my my two week old is not in her sleeper. Her panties on the floor. She's not in her sleeper. She's not in her sleeper. She's she, she's not here. I've looked everywhere. I've looked under clothes and everything. What's your address, man? Yes, lot thirty one. No. Do you think somebody took her, ma'am? My child said my my, my two year old says she's gone. And I've lived everywhere in the house, so I don't, I don't know another possibility. What lot number are you at? 31. Okay. And you said you were sleeping, and woke up, and she was gone? Yes. My, my, my two-year-old came and woke me up. Okay. That's how we sleep on the couch. Okay. This sounds dumb as hell. Okay. Well, oh, shit. First of all, the two-year-old comes in and tells <laughs> So the two-year-old comes in there and tells this bitch that that this kid is missing. And she's on the phone. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but this shit's stupid. Then she's on the phone talking about some Kato, that is that is baby is uh, what two weeks old. How the fuck she gonna be like right here? This bitch stupid as hell. So. I, if I was the person who picked up the call, I would have been like, "Yo, we coming to arrest you right now for this stupid ass emergency call that don't even make no sense to not even you if you sit down and listen to it if you were sober." Okay. How old is she, ma'am? Two weeks old. Okay. And you, who else would have come in your house? I, I mean, as far as I know, nobody would have came in my house. My two-year-old says Papa, but I called my dad and I called my grandparents. They don't have her. Okay. My dad's on the way here now. Okay. Uh, All right. How long have you been asleep? Um, the last time I woke up with her was around, I guess, five, maybe. Okay. So you were asleep since five o'clock? Yes. I didn't even mean to fall asleep on the couch. I sit down for a minute after dealing with her all night. Century, or can you tell if someone's been there? Is her blanket there gone? Um, her blanket's gone. Her passy's here on the floor. Her blanket's not with us. I don't know when. I mean, I, 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 I This bitch dumb as hell. Okay, first of all, she said the two-year-old won't move for them up. Then she said that she put, she fell asleep on the couch and didn't mean to fall asleep on the couch. And then she said, "Yo, son." Then she says, "Um, she just dumb as hell. This don't make no kind of sense." So then she says, "The pacifier is there, but the blanket's not." These are some thoughtful ass. Kidnappers, man. It's the bitch. No, I guess it's with her. Okay. And I have clothes and coats, but I've looked all in on it. She's not here. Anything else missing, like a baby bag that she would that she would have, or anything else? No. Her bottles here. <coughs> <coughs> They call for y'all. Remember that shit. Um, bottles there. 
I don't I don't know why they would take a blanket to kill up a child and this is with some ransom or something. They just grabbed the damn cute and went on up and... on top of my shelf. Okay. What about what about anything else that could possibly have gone like could be hers that could have gone with it? Um, you know, nothing else. Just her and her blanket. Okay, so the only thing is miss, that's missing is her and her blanket. Yeah. She didn't talk to the dad or grandma or anybody. My dad was here and your dad just left and he's walking around the park looking for her. Because my two-year-old says, I asked her, did somebody come in and take her? And she said, yeah, but I don't, I, you know, she's two, so I don't know if right. I can play that or, or not. Did you look through everything, like under the bed? Yes, the ma'am. Bathroom? Yes, ma'am. Liar. Okay. Clear. All right. What's your name, ma'am? Courtney Bell. C O R T N E Y B E L L. Just to let you know, Courtney, they've been on the way out there. I'm just getting this information to update them. Okay. Thank you, good morning. What's your phone number? Um, I'm not sure of this number. I, my phone busted the other day. Um, okay. This is my, my mother's phone. She's been letting me use. All right. So you and the dad both were. I'm just trying to get to understand so I can let them know because uh, of the questions that they're asking me. You and the dad both were sleeping, or he just came back home. No, me and him woke up together. She woke us up together. Okay. The two year old woke uh, y'all up and told y'all that the baby was gone. Yes. Okay. She and, she kind of freaked out. I mean, it, I don't, I don't know, because she was just standing there beside the couch in the corner, and I told her, come here, and I loved on her, and then I told my baby's dad to go check on Kalea, and then he was talking about she's not in here, she's not in here. Okay, well, the police should be in the area now. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and let you go, okay? Thank you. Taken to the place where her body was found. The infant's body was found in the woods back in 2017. Well, today, a Newton killing testimony today in the trial against a Newton County couple charged with the murder of their two week old child. And the jurors held her details of two week old Kalia McNabb's gruesome death. Then they were taken to the place where her body was found. The infant's body was found in the woods back in 2017. Well, today, a Newton County Sheriff's investigator revealed that Kalia was stuffed in a blue and red Nike draw string bag. Prosecutors insist that bag belonged to her father. Once I removed those other items uh, and got down to that blue cloth, uh, it was wrapped so tightly I could not get it loose to see what was inside of it, but I could feel that there was something inside of that cloth. At that time, I used my pocket knife to cut a small hole inside that cloth. When I moved the cloth back, that's when I found, saw the, the head and the, some hair. At that time, I instructed the, uh, Sergeant Dickerson to get everyone away from the scene right there and go ahead and block it off and notify um, our coroner. Did that appear to be the head of an adult or a child? It was the head of a child. An infant? Yes. Well, this afternoon, jurors left the courthouse to see the mobile home park where the family lived. Then they were taken to the area where investigators found Kalia's body. The baby was found in a bag in some woods about 900 yards from the home. Now, McNabb and Bell were in a car with Bell's mother when they learned police had found the body. Bell's mother testified in court that she ordered McNabb to run. What did Chris do? He got out of the car. I told him to get out of the car because I was afraid that guns were going to be put on the car. Why would you think that there were going to be guns put on the car? I didn't know who or who was responsible for, for what had happened. Well, both Bell and McNabb claim they were asleep when their two-year-old disappeared. The testimony continues tomorrow.
taken to the place where her body was found. The infant's body was found in the woods back in 2017. Well, today, a Newton County Sheriff's investigator revealed that Kalia was stuffed in a blue and red Nike drawstring bag. Prosecutors insist that bag belonged to her father. Once I remove those other items. Taken to the place where her body was found. The infant's body was found in the woods. Tonight, a devastated family in the Newton County community waiting for news of what happened to two-year-old Kalia McNabb. The infant disappeared from her home on Saturday. A searcher found the body of an infant near that home a day later, but investigators have not yet said whether it is Kalia's. Our Fox 5's Portia Bruner is live in Newton County tonight with the latest on this terrible story. Portia? Yeah, still lots of heartache in this community as everyone, especially in that mobile home community where that little baby... Let's turn now to a sentencing hearing on Ms. Bell. Does the state have any evidence it wishes to offer in aggravation? No, Your Honor. Mr. Carter, or excuse me, Mr. Frost, uh, do you have any evidence you wish to order in mitigation? Judge, I would just like to state that Ms. Ms. Bell's crimes, uh, as found by the jury to be guilty, um, were more of her being a willing victim and that spilled over into what happened um, as to her children um, it's terrible and it's extremely sad that that happened um, but I don't think that and obviously she was not charged to the level that Mr. McNabb was and um, I would just ask the court to take take those factors of she didn't have the opportunity of having an upbringing as um, I think I discussed in my closing. Uh, she had no role models for that. She was suffering from addiction and, and abuse and um, should she have done something? Yes, she should have. Uh, she didn't and that's what led her here. And uh, But I think that she, there's through courses, coping mechanisms, things that she might learn uh, through prison classes and afterwards, uh, there would certainly be the possibility of her being someone who could be a productive member of society if she were to embrace some of those things and, um, and put them to use in her life. So we would ask the court to take those into consideration. Thank you. Does your client wish to make any statements? What I didn't do is <laughs> Y'all know I didn't do this. Still, you and I had a conversation back. We did. Back in chambers on Wednesday, remember, boy? And at the time I told you there's a difference between the reality of the situation and what you think. I explained to you exactly why you were being charged with the crimes. What that you knew about the murder, what that you anticipated the murder, what that you planned the murder, any of those things. It was simply that you created an environment that caused your children to be put second and Mr. McNabb to be put first. As the state said in their closing, and they use the example of a rattlesnake being thrown into a room and the child being put into there. Well, your whole claim is I took him back because I wanted to have a family. In that analogy the state used, it's just kind of like saying, your child's dead from a rattlesnake bite. Why would you put it in there? And you responded. Why well, just wanted her to enjoy nature, have an appreciation of the outdoors without appreciating the danger. I'm sorry, but for you to go around chasing McNabb, doing meth, flies in the face of what any normal mother would do. We hear stories out in society, I mean, out everywhere. The mother bear. They're so ferocious. Why? Because you're messing with their child. All those kind of things. 
and you chose methamphetamine and McNair over a baby. It's a sickness, but I tried to be a good mama. But I love my babies. The problem, Miss McNair, is that like most criminals, you have this version of what a good mama is that is so far from the norm that, you know, you go anywhere in this county, talk to anybody who's watching this and say, is it a good mama who doesn't even care about her 14-year-old baby? Put them with the cousin. I, I know the instances where mamas won't even live in the first couple of weeks of a child's life. People around the child for fear that the child's immune system hadn't been built up and they don't want germs brought into the child. They go to that extent. You went just the exact opposite direction. And there's just no excuse for that. 